After weeks of cleaning up her tsunami-damaged home, 67-year-old Michiko Abe hoped her family would be able to move back in again. Instead, she worries that day may never come. I had no idea the ground had sunk so much. At the time of the first high tide about a month after the quake, the water gradually rose and eventually reached the road in front of the house. For three or four days it continued rising, and when it was highest, the water reached our entrance. At the same time every day, the Abbas neighborhood becomes a virtual watery ghost town. After the March 11th quake, this entire area shifted and sank a good 80 centimeters. Now, every time the tide rises, the waters rush in again and sometimes reach as high as the knee. For many residents, it's like reliving the tsunami all over again. But it's also monsoon season now, and the additional waters don't help any. Residents and the local government have put sandbags to try to keep the waters at bay, but they haven't been able to stop them entirely. Some 56 square kilometers of Miyagi Prefecture are now below sea level. That's more than three times what it was before the quake. We are taking measures to stop the water from flooding in and lowering the water level by pumping it out at the same time. This is necessary to clear the hygiene issues too. I think it is most important that we try to get back our normal life. But normal will have to be redefined in places across northeastern Japan like Ishinomaki, where landscapes have been altered and thousands are still living in temporary housing while they figure out their next step. We expect that uh, somehow uh, the land would uplift, uh, but uh, it will take a very long time. Uh, for example, 10 years or uh, 20 years or 30 years. And so residents like Michiko do what they can. They're lucky to have survived it all. This new challenge for them is nothing more than that. Another hurdle, they say, to get past and adjust to, so they can carry on rebuilding their lives. Margot Ortigas, Al Jazeera, Ishinomaki, Japan.